Gospel according to John, the 18th chapter, 33rd, 34th, and then the 37th and 38th verses. The Lord said the same, and now we will be the thought. Amen. Gospel according to John, the 18th chapter, 33rd verse. If you have it, say amen. Amen. And it reads, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Then we go to the 37th verse. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What? Yields truth. And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Amen. Amen. The church standing for the truth and nothing but the truth. Church must stand Come on, 
on the truth. Amen. Amen. And what's happening is that the church is allowing the world to dictate its agenda. Right. Amen. The, the church is, is no longer, amen, doing the will of God according to the word, but, but everything is so politically, I can't find the philosophy of a political leader. And it's founded upon the truth. Most of all, he despises seeing the image of Lucifer in man. God created man after his image, after his likeness. Amen. Now I heard one preacher, amen, say that, well, if we're in the image of God, then God is six to talk. I said, Lord Jesus. And this man leaving a lot of folks Come on in error. Because when he said that he created man after his image, he wasn't talking about physically. God is a spirit. And he said, be holy for I am holy. So when he created man in his image, he created man. Despises most of when he see when he see man as being the mirror image of Lucifer. Amen. Amen. Because the word of God said in Psalms 101 and 7, he that work of deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that tell lies shall not tarry in the son of said in, in Psalm the 15th. Book in that first and second verse, he said, Lord, who shall abide in that tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Yes, 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 the church of God, we will stand for the truth and nothing but the truth. I'm of this mind that when you speak truth, you ain't gonna have a lot of people following you. When you speak truth, you ain't gonna have a lot of people saying, go ahead. When you speak truth, they're gonna learn back from you. But I heard what the word of God said in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, first through the fourth verse. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, and his appearing and his kingdom. He told us to preach the word, preach the word, preach the truth, be instant in season, out of season. When you preach the word, you're going to reprove. When you preach the word, you're going to reprove. When you preach the word, you're going to exalt. Just with one piece of bone. Amen. Amen. You've got to build 
upon that peace. And one thing about the word of God, the word of God does not contradict itself. Amen. It supports itself from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. For the word of God says, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We gotta preach truth. Amen. Amen. It reminds me of a story about this minister. This preacher was preaching, and he didn't believe in submersion and baptism. He believed in sprinkling. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And he was about to illustrate a point about baptism and sprinkling. He pointed out, he said that John the Baptist, when he baptized Jesus in the river of Jordan, on, it didn't mean in. It meant close to, round right about, and nearby. He tried to justify sprinkling. Yeah. And again, he said that when Philip baptized the eunuch yeah. in the river, uh -huh. it didn't mean in. It mean close to, round about, and nearby. Well, after the service, a man that was sitting in the back, he came up to shake the preacher's hand. And he said to him, he said, I thank you for that sermon. That was a great sermon, the greatest sermon I ever heard. The preacher said, well, well thank you, thank you. He said, now I, I have a clearer understanding about the mysteries that is encountered in the word. He said, for instance, the story about Jonah getting swallowed by the well has always bothered me. But now I know that Jonah wasn't really in the well. He was close to, yeah. round about, nearby. <laughs> and also the story about the three Hebrew boys. Uh, I, I understand now that they wasn't really thrown into the fiery furnace and, uh, because they didn't get burned, but they was really round about, close to, nearby that furnace. And it just kept on. But the hardest story of all for me to believe was the story about Daniel being born in the lion's den. But now I see that he wasn't really in the lion's den. But he was close to, round about, nearby, just like he was going to the zoo. He said, I'm glad you revealed this because. I'm a wicked man, and I'm gratified to know that I won't be in hell, but I'll be close to, right about, and nearby hell. So next Sunday, I won't be in church. I'll just be close to, nearby, right about the church.